Hey, good evening. What's going on, everybody? It's another one of those Army Reenlistment.com live streams. And tonight we have a great show for you. Um, my name is Master Sergeant Tim Donahue. Uh, I am a senior career counselor and a member of the Army Reenlistment team, along with my co-host, Staff Sergeant Shante Waterbury. Shante, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm great. I'm out here baking at Bragg, but you know, other than that, I'm living life. I'm happy. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. I'm I'm gambling on uh South American soccer right now. So it's uh it's not too bad at all, right quick. I'm doing really good. I'm up like uh I'm up like $150 today. So that's good. Uh but we have a great show. We have one of our uh one of our early guests from the live streams that come back by popular demand, popular, mm -hmm. popular guest, and a great source of information. So let's without further ado, let's bring them on. We're gonna talk about the promotions, the new promotion changes that have happened late recently, and who better than to bring on Song Major Kenyatta Gaskin. Song Major, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Shante, how you I, doing? I'm good, Song Major. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. Thanks for having me once again. Hey, y'all need to um give me a seat now. So I feel like I'm I'm a I'm an old <laughs> veteran at this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like on you know like on like on like talk show late late land shows, they got like that guest that could come on whenever. That's you. There you go. You mm -hmm. had you had that open mm -hmm. door. Um but, but uh you came on last time you talked about the NCO evaluation board system because a lot of people they were like, Oh, I got selected. Nah, you didn't get selected, you got qualified in your own mail number, and we talked about that. But a lot of changes have happened in promotion, uh promotion since then. So we was like, Hey, you know what? Who better to have on the Star Major Gaskins since I mean, I read about corporals uh, having you having to become a corporal in the Army Times and they quoted you. So I was like, hey, let's go straight to the horse's mouth and get them. Mm -hmm. All right. So some of the Gaskins. They put me so out how, there, right? <laughs> they, they, got, they got you quoted and everything. I don't know if it's a direct quote or they, they had took some of like a uh, manipulation of your words and, and charmed it together. But um, we're going to see what it is. So with that being said, what? How many changes are there and what changes do you want to highlight on? The floor is yours. So there, there are quite a few changes, um, you know, for those that who, who've been listening and been around long enough to know that, yeah, we, we, we're definitely doing an overhaul when it comes to uh, NCO professional development. That's uh, at the junior and senior level. So there are a lot of changes and a lot more changes to come. Um, we got a couple of things that we're working on right now that I want to highlight here uh, within this show. And we'll get into those and we'll get into some 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 questions because I know there are some questions out there. Of course. But, uh, so before we do that, if you don't mind, um, if we can go ahead and get started with with I know we did it last time, but there may be some folks who, who may not know exactly what it is that that I do um, uh, for the Army. So I'll go okay. ahead and uh, if uh, Sergeant Waterbury, if you can throw up that first slide. Hey, so. Again, my name is Sergeant Major Kenyatta Gaskins. I work in headquarters department of the Army G1 uh, within the Directorate of Military Personnel Management. So I'm the DMPM Sergeant Major. I work for Major General Douglas Stitt, and we have a team of about 160, 165-ish um, great Americans, uh, green suitors, and civilians alike. Um, we, we like to call ourselves the, the G3 of the Army G1. <laughs> so we, we, we have a lot going on. You know, these are just a couple of things. So we're one of six directorates and six DRUs, direct reporting units of the Army G1. Um, and, and a few things that we handle are, are listed here. Um, sessions, uh, you know, we handle it for regular Army, National Guard and Army Reserves for all three cohorts. That's um, officer, warrant officer and enlisted. So a sessions, that's OCS. That's huge. That's, Enlisted pipeline, uh, basic training when it comes to numbers, working with USA, right? Yep. How many we bring it in? Um, you know, that changes and that that fluctuates throughout the year. Um, West Point, um, you know, officer sessions, uh, moving on to training requirements, ATARs. A lot of people think that's a G3 or a three function. That's actually a function out of the Army G1. So we're the owners of that. Uh, traps, for those that are familiar with those, when we're <laughs> When it comes to drill sergeants, recruiters, those training requirements, yep. um, there's a process to that for determining how many goes to a class um, that year based off of how many we, we need that year. So we own that with ATARs, uh, Army Command Policy. So real big right now is religious accommodations. So believe it or not, we work yeah. with religious accommodations. The Army G1 is the approval for that. And, and that section right there, I would say, outside of one or two other sections within the DMPM is probably the busiest with what they have going on. Because, uh, you know, with this time with 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 equity and, uh, you know, 
you know, bringing people in and treating them um, the way that they want to be treated when it comes to religious accommodations. We, we handle that. Um, mm -hmm. Transgender policy. Um, we just had the transgender policy signed last week. Um, it was approved with the uh, uh, NDAA at the, at the end of last year and the Army, um, with all the turnover that we had with the senior leadership, it took a while to get that over the goal line, but we actually signed that last year and you'll hear about that actually this week um, okay. as, it's, as it's released to the field. Um, you heard it here first. Mobilization. Yep, yep, you heard it here first. So mobilization, you know, we work with, uh, with, with the, the National Guard when it comes to mobilizing soldiers for different organizations throughout the Army. Um, ADOS and retiree recalls and those things. Um, between enlisted and officer policy, that's probably uh, the meat and potatoes within the DMPM. Yep. You know, we handle everything from uh, professional development for, for both cohorts, or excuse me, all three cohorts. Uh, you know, specifically with the enlisted uh, policy, it's everything from active component manning guidance, uh, AR 600-25, which is the, which is the uh, non-commissioned officer's guide, board policies. So we established the policies for what HRC executes. Again, we own the senior army career counselor. I think you know who that is, uh, Sergeant Major mm -hmm. Toby Whitney and his team there. So they actually work out of the DMPM. Um, officer policy, 600-3, um, which is their guide. Uh, all all things officer policy with, with the boards. We run boards through uh, within the DMPM. We established a policy for both officer and listed boards, like I said earlier, for HRC to execute. Uh, we run suitability. Suitability. Um, I always struggle with that word. Uh, when it comes to boards, after boards, when before they're released, um, we we screen all the individuals who 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 were selected um, selected prior to, um, and 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 we make sure that they're good to go prior to releasing board results. Um, and we also have Soldier for Life, which is not to be confused with what used to be called Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. That program mm -hmm. is actually called Transition Assistance Program. Now, that's it, TAP. Um, that's where, you know, you go through your classes prior to getting out. They help you out, get you on your feet once you rotate out of the Army. Now, Soldier for Life is something totally different. Um, what they do, mm -hmm. they have a team of folks um, who go out. They liaise with different businesses throughout the country, telling them the soldier story, what soldiers can do for you as they transition out of the army. So uh, we have all kinds of programs. We have the, the Hire to Inspire program and all kinds of other programs that will probably take a, uh, a good chunk of this, this briefing here if I wanted to explain yeah. them all. <laughs> Again, this is just a little bit of what the DMPM does. So I wanted to kind of get that out just to give an idea of what we do prior to getting into the brief. Yeah, y'all, 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 y'all own a lot. Y'all, y'all take a lot of responsibility and ownership of stuff in the army that people don't realize that y'all had. Yep. And one of those pieces is definitely the promotion piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's a, you know, it's a hot topic these days because we just changed everything um, recently. So, you know, yeah, you said the promotion piece. So it's an act. We like to call it the uh, professional development. You know, it's not just promotions. Yep. Promotions is just one part of it now. So. Um, you know, back in February with the staff sergeant evaluation board, that was the last board that transitioned over to the evaluation board process. So there are no longer quote unquote promotion boards. So the evaluation boards, they, uh, the results of the evaluation boards are the order of merit lists for that, that particular grade. So your staff sergeant board is evaluating staff sergeants with one of the things um, evaluating them for promotion potential. You know, the boards, what they do is, uh, uh, professional development, right, for the promotion potential. It also improves readiness, you know, getting prepared for different requirements. So if you remember during promotion board process, we didn't always get that right. Uh, yep. You know, we, we'd select too many sometimes. Sometimes we didn't select enough, you know, so it was always that roller coaster effect. It was tough getting it right. So now with the enlisted evaluation board process, we can keep it even killed. Everybody gets an OML and then we can promote based off requirements. So long as that individual, that soldier uh, meets all the requirements for that, which are a couple of requirements. That's, you know, the time and service, time and grade and the professional military and um, education, PME, the school's requirements. So they meet all those and the requirement comes and the number is called and they're fully eligible for promotion. Okay. Okay. So uh, like, like you said, it's a, it's a, 
it's a big process and it's a it's a lot of things that go into the professional development and the promotion piece is one of them. So one of the biggest changes that we've talked about as career counselors that we've seen going into effect is this corporal, this mandatory corporal time. Uh, would you like to speak on that? Yeah, let's speak on it. Do I have a choice? <laughs> Actually, uh, I mean, I mean, you can be like, uh, no comment, but that wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't really do no good. I'm, I'm just here, so I won't get fined, right? Yeah. So um, hey, just, no. So the corporal initiative. So this is a a army initiative that uh, was approved by the Sergeant Major of the Army. It supports the the this is my squad initiative. So for those out there that aren't familiar with that initiative, I just uh, um, ask that you do that. You know, it's all about junior leader development. Um, building cohesive teams, getting to know your soldiers and getting after, um, you know, going back to the basics, you know, you know, your soldiers, you know what they have going on, you know what their, 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 their ticks are or what have you. It makes, you know, it makes it so much easier. It makes it, um, you know, if there's something wrong, you could identify that really quickly. So this is just one part of it. So there is um, a lot of initiatives out there. So this corporate initiative, so it started uh, believe it or not, last fall in September 2020 with the changing of the MOI for BOC. So what they did, they added su sexual harassment, uh, suicide prevention, substance abuse, fitness, all those things into the curriculum of BOC, getting those junior leaders prepared for what they are going to uh, get once they become non-commissioned officers and responsible for soldiers. So that was the first portion that changed. Now, this is the second portion, the corporal initiative, making soldiers corporals once they become fully eligible meaning gone to a promotion board and recommended recommended for blc go to blc and graduate and once they uh, are, are graduates of blc then they're authorized to be laterally appointed to corporal so regardless of if you made the promotion points as soon as you graduated blc or not once you finish blc and you're fully eligible you laterally appoint to corporal and then you will be eligible once you hit those promotion points for sergeant, you'll be promoted to sergeant. So if I let's say in a perfect world, I go to BLC, I'm fully promotable. Uh, I, I've been to the promotion board. Now I have PME. I got my BLC. I, I on Tuesday, I become a corporal. I may cut off that same month. I can make it within one month or is there time requirements involved? It, it's it's going to be one month. One month is going to okay. be the minimum requirement. So, yeah. So they're going to uh, pin on corporate rank, half corporate rank on for at least a month. Yeah. So, I got you. Oh, yeah. So, so that's that, good that because was, that was that was that was the second part of it. And the third part is uh, still in development right now, which is a uh, warrior tasks and battle drills. So <laughs> Tradoc is developing that right now. So, again, it's getting back to the basics. Right. So. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a specialist um, will and it's going to be straight across the board for the whole army. So it's not going to be unit specific or MOS specific. It is, you know, basically out of, you know, the, the war, war attacks and battle drills. You know, it's, it's no different. Um, again, uh, Trade Doc is, is developing that. So once that's fully developed and implemented, that it will look like war attacks and battle drills. Get the GOAT. Um, the GOAT authorizes you to go to the promotion board. Go to the promotion board and get the green light. You go to BLC, BLC, you graduate and you will pin on corporal. So that is just one part of of the junior leader development changes that we're doing right now. So the 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 theory is you invest in your junior leaders. They become great senior leaders in the future. And we can get after some of these things that have been happening uh, throughout our army. Real quick, Sergeant Major, we got a question for you from the audience. Um, okay. Aaron wants to know if the lateral appointment to corporal is done at the schoolhouse or will that be done at the unit? Yeah, great question. Um, that's going to be done at the unit. So we don't want to put that on these uh, uh, NCO academies to have to do that. Now, what you probably will see is on graduation day that on the parade field or, or, or auditorium or wherever they graduate at, that they will pin on the rank. Um, after the ceremony, but the paperwork is going to be on the unit of assignment. Now that's in cool. the interim until until it's established within IPSA, and and, and straight up uh, plug for IPSA too. So IPSA <laughs> shout release out to three. IPSA. Yeah, shout out to IPSA. <laughs> IPSA release three. <laughs> if you're not familiar with it? Get familiar with it. So come uh, December, they're going to go through what we're calling a brownout period, where we transition everything over to to IPSA, and then come the beginning of the year, 2022, the regular regular army is going to be on FSA. So I say that because uh, 
the question was, is it going to be at the academies or at the unit level? So yes, it's always going to be at the unit level, but it's going to be more streamlined once IPSA comes, comes along. So once that's on board, um, we already have algorithms. There you go. That's the word yeah. I was looking for. There are <laughs> algorithms that are built uh, to once, you know, you press that button, you know, Gaskins completed BOC, bam, there you go. And the paperwork is, is automatically generated, laterally promoting yeah. the corporate. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that, yeah, it say ain't no joke. It say is uh, it's gonna take my job soon, so that's good. Um, so, I right, so the corporate thing it makes sense, right? Because you want people to have that leadership, uh, even if it's just a month. I mean, now yeah. they have that because you have that. You have situations where somebody goes to promotion board, never been in a leadership position, never had nothing like that, and it's getting us back to the basis of being a leader, being uh, being somebody who knows your soldiers. And I think it's a great idea. No, it, it's good. Uh, you know, uh, I start out a lot of my briefs with uh, change. Change is inevitable. You know, it, it, it happens. Either you roll with it or, you know, you're going to be left behind because you're still stuck in the past. So I would just, uh, you know, whether whether you agree or disagree, you know, think about, um, you know, for those that were corporals before. You know, I know I was, you know, several years ago. And, and you know, you felt good about that. You know, yeah, you weren't a sergeant E5 yet, but you were a non-commissioned officer, you know, that had those two stripes on, man. That meant the world. You know, so, you know, a year or so from now, every corporal in the Army that you see, you know, they're going to be, uh, have already been to the promotion board, and they're already going to have graduated BOC. So they're just essentially waiting on promotion points to get promoted. So that that's the, the change, whereas it used to be the corporals are the ones that are in NCO positions and they have soldiers. You know, so that that slight change right there is what we're just going to have to uh, understand going forward. OK, uh, we have a question from the side. I like I, I'm not. Uh, they want to know. Uh, Brandy wants to know uh, what published guidance states that being a corporal is a requirement and they bid it in all caps. So I mean, it must mean it's important uh, <laughs> requirement to be promoted to sergeant. Uh, have, have, that guidance has been put out in the Milford message or Alaract already. Right. If I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, man, is the L, where is the, I got the number right here. <laughs> I got you. And while you're looking for that, they also said also what consideration slash guidance has been pushed out for those that meet the temporary promotion requirements recommended for promotion and meet cutoff scores, but unable to attend PME pregnancy and therefore yeah. unable to qualify for the lateral promotion of corporal. Great question. So the, two separate things, temp promotions is a thing by pregnancy uh, deployment. If you meet those requirements, you will be promoted to sergeant. You know, so that 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 is the that might be the only difference where you see a specialist that goes straight to sergeant. Okay, makes sense. And then, uh, so yeah, so just uh, Brandon, I got it. I, oh, you got it. Go ahead. You got it. Oh, just the uh, the Alarac. Someone wanted to know uh, what Alarac it was that covered the lateral appointment. I got you, sergeant major. Or sorry, yeah, there you go. There you go. We published the Alarac. Oh, look, look. Okay. Milper, yeah, twenty. Uh, no per twenty one dash two hundred five Alarac zero five zero fifty uh, slash twenty twenty one. Um, and we also what you're looking at right now is a frequently asked questions um, brief. So that's published on HRC's website. And yeah, we have published it on seven June. So this is essentially hot off the press there. So um, all the questions, not all of them, most of them. Um, are answered in this frequently asked questions brief right there. So, yeah, awesome. like like Jeezy says, opportunity is everywhere. You got to get yours. So there go out go. there, get it. You want to get promoted? Go get it. Right. Um. Right. So we talked about corporals, and that's going to be a big change, and that's good because that gives us the leadership. Because a lot of times we see it um, from our foxhole as career counselors. You see it from big picture. You see a lot of leaders that aren't ready to be leaders. And it's getting us back to the basics. And, and a lot of people aren't always attuned to the change. Sometimes you right. got to have that change. And change yeah. is good. Just because yeah. the stuff is changing, we don't understand it. And it might not be perfect at first. It's going yeah. to change. It's yeah. definitely and, and going I, to change. And what we talked about a little earlier, you know, sometimes, sometimes, most of the time, a lot of the times, I should say, we don't get it right the first time. You know, there's some things that's like, man, we could have did this better. So that's one of the great things about enlisted policy. It's just that it's policy. So if we find, hey, we need to tweak something. We need to make a change. We can do that as long as the senior army senior leadership is on board with it. We can make it happen. So that's that's Got the it. good thing about enlisted policy. Here's another one for you, Sergeant Major. Um, does the corporal appointment policy eliminate the MLI? Nope, it, it, it does not. 
It does not. Right now. <laughs> I'll put that as of, as of today. As of today, it does <laughs> not. Today. It does not. As of today, it does not. It does not. Yeah. So uh, it makes sense. It makes sense to keep doing it. Um. So we've talked about the corpus, right? Let's talk about something that we're going to have a lot of. We've already got a lot of questions for, but we're going to preface it by going into the changes to it. So promotions to Sergeant First Class. Sergeant Major, do you want to take over and talk about the changes? I think there's changes to time and grade, time and service. I don't know. Uh, I, I was a Sergeant First Class a long time ago. I don't, I, I don't really look forward. I mean, backwards, I only look forward. And I'm only looking forward to retirement. I want to be real with y'all. So, um, But I'm here for y'all. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, so th this is a contentious issue. This whole uh, time and grade requirements to be, um, you know, fully qualified for a promotion. But in actuality, we 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 looked at this holistically, and we determined, um, you know, with the SMA's guidance that 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 Staff Sergeant Isaac Hill. I see that. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that Staff Sergeant uh, grade plate is that's the, the that's the grade plate that we want. Uh, non-commissioned officers to develop in the most, you know, so with SMA's guidance, SMA Grinston's guidance, we wanted to keep uh, the staff sergeants in that grade in order to develop and get what, what we're calling a key and developmental assignment right now. That's what we're calling it right now. And also to get a broadening assignment, you know, drill, recruiter, whatever yep. other kind of broadening assignment prior to getting promoted to sergeant first class. You know, what happened a lot of times is you'd have some and, and, and it's not good or bad. It's just, it is what it is. Just is how it was. You know, they, they, they do a lot of their time in the operational army and, and not get fully brought And the next thing you know, they're, they're promoted to Sergeant first class. And then it goes, yep. went the other way. You know, you had some that were tagged for, for a drill. And the next thing you know, they went to recruiter and didn't have that, that broadening that experiences in the operational army and they're promoted to Sergeant first class. So it was about getting time, giving them time uh, in that grade in order to, to fully develop prior to getting um, becoming a senior non-commissioned officer. Now, now I ask people to think about this. You know, be you know, have a have an open mind once I explain this. So, under the promotion board system, you got looked at um, after two years, right? So, to 24 months time and grade, a staff sergeant, I get looked at for sergeant first class. That's how it was. Let's say I'm high speed. I get in there at at two years and one month. I just made it in there to get evaluated. I get evaluated, bam, I'm selected for a promotion. I got a sequence number. But since I'm the junior, one of the junior folks that got selected, I have the higher sequence number. You know, yeah, a lot of people didn't last. understand. A lot of people right. didn't understand that. Like me being a young soldier, I remember I had a, uh, when I first became a career counselor and I didn't, I was, I was very ignorant to, to how promotions work, right? I just thought, yeah. and I knew this career counselor and he was a bum and he was number two on the list. And I was like, damn, how I was like, damn, how is he really number two? And then somebody was like, nah, man, that's not how it works. Uh, he just got a lot of time in, a, in the army and a lot of time in this in this grade. I was like, oh, man, that makes sense. Hey, so it, was a mercy, it was a mercy promotion. So to, to quote you, the bums, right? No. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Hey, so the, 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 the folks that had that had uh, they were more senior in the army. Um, they were getting the lower sequence number. So with this whole evaluation board process, that changes that. So it's all about uh, rewarding the the best soldier, the best person. So um, with the, you know, I could be the most junior person getting evaluated, yet I'd get the lowest OML number. That's, yeah, that's and just how it's going to work out within the evaluation board system. So that's one. Um, back to the time and grade. So I'm that two year, one month guy. I get looked at. I'm selected for promotion. I get it. I get a high se uh, sequence number. You know, typically the boards would take a year, sometimes a little bit longer to exhaust. Um, so by that time, I'm three years time in grade, sometimes more, three and a half years time in grade. Um, and that's just the high speed one who just got in and got looked at. What if the I was three years or maybe four years time in grade? And then you add on that year, year and a half. Next thing you know, I'm five years, five plus years time in grade by the time I get selected for promotion. All right. So think yep. about that. Now, about a month ago, I had my team evaluate current sergeant first classes in the army right now, right now, every sergeant first class in the army. We didn't break it down by every MOS, but we broke it down by every CMF, every CMF. Right. So um, the average was about 5.4 years time in grade, um, you know, from staff sergeants to sergeant first class. Right. 
five years. Um, and and, and I, I have the paper right here. We broke it down by CMF. So the longest was CMF 11, 6.1 years. CMF wow. 11. Those are current SAR first classes and SAR first class 11 uh, Bravos in the Army. The minimum was CMF 18 Special Forces guys. They were 4.3 years from Staff Sergeant to Sergeant First Class. And then and that everything makes in between. So, I mean, yes, on, on, on surface, you see, damn, it's 48 months. You know, that's not fair. But in reality, you know, it, it, it evens itself out. It, it really does. You know, it's, you know, people say it's easy for you to say you already made Sergeant Major. I get that. I, I totally get that. Um, However, if you look at it just based off the stats that I just read out right here, it's not much of a change. It's really not. So um, I, I will say that. So, you know, you with the bums, I won't say bums. Those are the, uh, you know. I, I, was, I, was yeah. I was talking about a specific, I was talking about a specific person that was a bum. He was a legit, like, known bum. Like, like, like he was, he was a bum. Like, like if you yeah. was, if, if he was on, a, if we were talking about a championship team, he was like the, the guy that comes in for the mop-up minutes. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Okay. I got you. I follow you. <laughs> you didn't say bums. I said bum. I said a bum. Like you one bum. Okay. There one bum. Yeah. There you didn't say it. I said it. <laughs> so if anybody gets mad that somebody said bums, it was me. So get Matt on Tim Donahue. Yeah. Get at me. His name, uh, he's not in the Army no more, uh, Redis. Stop he's it. not in the Army no more. So I won't, I won't say his name. I won't say I won't say his name, right? All right. So let so so now that we're talking about the song first class with the time and grade, time and service, the other hot question that we've been seeing right here, right? Is uh when is the FY19 list getting a good exhausted? Yeah. Okay, now, we so probably our, got like 30 our, questions our intent, on the side. Yeah, our, our intent, Army G1's intent was to have that list um exhausted in June. So you see it's already June, right? And it's not. So there are a lot of factors that go into that that are, are out of our hands. And first and foremost is that budget factor. So uh, fun fact, uh, for those who don't know, the Army G1 owns 51% of the Army's budget. Mm. I'm going to say that one more time. The Army <laughs> G1 owns 51% of the Army's budget. Now, um, Staff Sergeant Waterbury, can you, you have an idea why you think that is? Oh, man. Um, sorry, Sergeant Major. I'm not gonna lie. I was reading these comments over here. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You, there you go. So pay, paying allowances, which includes bonuses. That's why. That is why. You know, a lot of people think that's a a, a, a G8 or you know finance and accounting uh, function. No, that's within the Army G1. So we have a whole directorate, the Plans and Resources Directorate, that handles the uh, paying allowances, which includes bonuses and those things. So if you think about it, when it comes time for budget cuts um, and all those things, unfortunately, the first thing that hits is uh, the soldiers and their wallets. You know, I, yep. I, I hate to say it, but that's what happens. So those things are kind of out of our control. Um, so we just roll with it. So, yes, the intent was to have that list exhausted in June. Uh, but right now we're looking toward the end of the year. Definitely. Man, I say definitely. Though. Somebody's going to say, man, you said we're going to get more. But we, we're trying to get that by the end of this year. So by the is end that, of the Is that FY? Year. Is that the FY or the calendar? Uh, FY. By the end okay. of the FY. Yeah. That's, so that, that's that means intent. September. Well, that's a couple months. Yeah, it, it really is. But if you tell me the list can be exhausted in June and it's not, you know, I'm like, I got problems, man. You know, I got, <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got a summer to work out. You know, I got things to do. No, I'm just joking. But it, it, yeah, so it, it happens, you know, so. Gotcha. We still have a lot of people in the comments right now about the uh, the OML thing. And um, one comment that really caught my eye, which makes sense, is this one. It's a little long, uh, but this is for our viewers right now. Um, this person said that, you know, they didn't like the OML at first either, but after looking at it, they realized that these OMLs are not solely for promotions. Um, so I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to leave it up for a second. Um, I don't know if you want to, uh, touch on that at all, Sergeant Major, about this OML, because I know a lot of people oh, are still is, upset about that is, it. That is a great, that is a great comment right there. And, 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 you know, full disclosure, I wasn't totally on board either, but as I sat back and it's like, okay, you know it's not just promotions anymore. So I got to kind of think differently. I had to change my mindset. So I asked that those are, that are out there and that those that are responsible for soldiers, let them know that as well. So it is, it's about training, you know? So that OML informs training for professional military education. That's one. 
you know, just like you said, it informs promotions. It also informs retirement, right? Or retirement assignments. Sorry, it informs assignments. You know, so HRC uses that. They really do. They look at those old medals and determine, okay, what <clears throat> who is the best soldier for this assignment? And also with retention. I said retirement a little bit earlier. It's retention. So if we determine that, hey, it might be a, a good idea for, you know, such and such to, to pack their bags, it's time to go. That's what that board looks at. So those are the four major things that it's looking at, and it's not just promotion. So when those lists come out, it's an OML uh, or order of merit based list that informs all of those things. So um, you have your your fully qualified, well, most qualified, fully qualified, then you have your not fully qualified. So and and you know even further, not fully qualified for retention in specific cases. So there there, this board informs a lot of things for each each uh, each grade for every single board. So. Yes, that, that was I'm, a great comment for, for the person who's. I'm very glad you brought that up, Sergeant Major, because we just got another one um, asking if you can explain for those that didn't make the fully qualified list, how do they know, how do they know if they're not fully qualified, um, and do they or their chain of command get notified? Yeah, so the chain of command gets notified for the not fully qualified. Um, you know, we're working through that on how we should notify the not fully qualified ones, but the not fully qualified for attention. You know, that's that's when you start to look at QMP, Quality uh, Management Program Boards. That is through the chain of command. So that comes down uh, from HRC, HRC to the organization. And that leadership informs the soldiers that they are not fully qualified for retention. So, um, yeah, so they will be notified individually, in essence. So we have a, a lot of people that are asking about what if I had a low OML and they don't exhaust the list before the next border goes into effect? Uh, how will that go? So they, they just go back into, please reiterate how they go back into the pot for the next year, right? Is, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So the, the boards are once a year. So that OML uh, informs that particular year until the next year's board is, or the board results are released. So if I'm number one, on, on that on, on this year's board and they didn't have any requirements and nobody was selected for promotion um, it's it's on again so it's on me to continue to do what I have to do to stay competitive because it's a brand new board so it, um, you know I could be number one one year next year I could drop down to number five it, 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 that's just how it works out so that right there keeps everyone competitive so it's never let your foot up you know continue to do the things that you need to do to make yourself uh, competitive when it comes to these evaluation boards so it's never a, a you know going back to you know that that not as talented um aka bum individual right that that person stuck around for a while and you know they they, they got selected so this is going to do away for that you know this is going to keep everybody competitive year after year so there will be brand new oml numbers every single year mm -hmm. it keeps you uh, hungry all right, real quick, uh, for those in the audience who are asking when um, the board convenes every year, there was a document that went around, um, and I'm sure you can still find it, um, a quick Google yep. search, but um, here it is right here. Um, here this go. is what the schedule looks like for the uh, evaluation board every year. Um, so if that, you haven't gotten slightly, this, go ahead, Sergeant Major. That, yeah, that's slightly changed a little bit, but for the most part, it's the same. So this year, for example, the staff sergeant board was in February. Uh, the first arm master sergeant board was the beginning of May. Yep. And then the SAR major board will be in August and the sergeant first class board is scheduled for November. So the plan is to keep that same rotation year after year. You know, again, we can change it if we see, you know, it doesn't quite make sense as far as, um, you know, timing, you know, but right now that's what we're looking at as far as every single year, um, every single board being around the same time. Gotcha. So we got a couple of things about uh, a couple of people have brought up questions about PME, uh, especially once you have an OML number, it has to come from HRC from the uh, NCOES. It has to come from the schools. Uh, is there any talk of changing that uh, so people could do walk ons? Because right now, for example, somebody who's a SAR first class that has an OML number for, uh, for Matt promotion to master SAR, uh has an OML as a SAR first class, they can't go to MLC until they get uh, slotted by HRC, but somebody who who ha doesn't have enough time to get looked at for the evaluation board can walk on with a 4187. Is there any talk of changing that? Um, no. So, okay. Straight up, no. So, BLC is handled at the installation level. 
right? So for ALC, SLC, and MLC, that's handled at military schools branch at HRC. So Sergeant Major Abraham Johnson up there. So he, he works that, um, and the OML informs that. Now, when it comes to walk-on, so what, what happened when MLC was first established, it wasn't a requirement for promotion. So those are our first classes, whether they were promotable or not. They, if they got a class date and they got in, they were fortunate enough to uh, to get trained. They got it. So fast forward, those same Sergeant first classes, they may already have MLC knocked out. Two, non-commissioned officer academies, NCO academies. I guarantee if they have vacant slots, they will do everything they can to fill people in those slots, um, regardless of OML number. Now, they're going to uh, give first priority to the lower OMLs, but they're not going to yes. just turn people away just because their OML is higher. That's at the NCO Academy level. However, HRC schools branch for ALC, SLC, SLC, and MLC looks at the OMLs and the lowest ones get the first priority for schools training. First priority. Gotcha. So regardless of your time and grade, you know, if the, your OML is, is lower, you're going to get the first opportunity to train. So now I know what the next question is going to be because we always get it, right? So this year, for example, you're going to have or you have sergeants first class that are already MLC qualified. They have a higher OML than some sergeants first class that don't. So let me use this as an example. I am number two. I have a number two OML. Um, I haven't gotten school yet. Say I'm scheduled, right? Um, I just hadn't been and completed yet. But you got number 10. They already have it. They already got MLC knocked out. They meet all the other requirements. Um, if we were promoting based off requirements right now, who would get promoted first? That number ten would get promoted first right now, yeah. right? And 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 again, you know, it may seem out of sorts right now, but that's how the process is going to work from here and here on in the future. I will say it's it's new, it's brand new. And I mentioned you have a lot that are already school trained under the promotion board process because they were lucky enough to get a school date and graduate. You know, as this continues to go on year after year, more folks are going to get MLS or or PME qualified whether it be ALC, SOC, or MSC, they're going to get qualified. So you, th you imagine the next three to four years, you're going to have a, a abundance of regardless, pick your, pick your MOS that are already going to be school trained. So when those requirements start coming, the lower ML OMLs uh, folks are going to be the ones getting promoted. It's just right now, this is establishing, you know, we have to find a battle rhythm first. We have to figure out how this thing is going to work out, you know? Um, again, if we feel like it's disadvantaging folks in any type of way, we can go back and look at it and make a change to it. But as of right now, um, the fully qualified individual will be the one to get promoted prior to the lower OML individual, you know, based off requirements. Got you. So a question I keep seeing um, in the comments, our major is uh, about this, this list exhaustion again. Um, they want to know, uh, will the FY19 list need to be fully exhausted prior to um, the new OML numbers being called. Um, and also they want to know if the FY19 list needs to be fully exhausted across the board or if it's MOS specific. As of right now, it is fully across the board as of right now. You know, you don't want to mm -hmm. start promoting off a future, a later list and you still have folks on an earlier list sitting out there. I don't think that's fair to them. And, and, and I would agree that Army senior leaders wouldn't think that's fair to them as well. So, no, the plan is for that list to be fully um, exhausted prior to uh, moving on to the evaluation board process, um, picking up soldiers who were um, selected on the evaluation board. Got it. Oh, man. Uh, let's see what else we got for you, Sergeant Major. Um, let's see. Uh, someone wanted to know. Uh, it's up towards the top. Uh, basically, um, Henson's question. Where did it go? There we go. Can we expect changes to DAPM six hundred twenty five that can help service members stay competitive? Always. We can. We can always expect that. You know, some different CMFs they they update theirs differently because we leave it on the CMFs to do that. Um, however, yeah, there, there, there are constant, um, or there's encouragement for constant change to ensure that service members stay competitive. You know, it's different for, for each CMF. You know, I can speak on behalf of, of, of my CMF, um, shout out to the 42 alphas, right? You know, we, we do a pretty good job of, of laying that out within 600-25 and having that mirror 
the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the timeline. Um, I'm drawing a blank here. You know the career you know, tracker. Like, yeah, the yeah. career tracker. You know, trying to trying to match that up. You know, hey, this is what you should be. We're recommending you do this at this time to keep you competitive for the next promotion. Um, so yes, to answer your question, there's always an opportunity for um, updates and, and changes in order for service members to stay competitive. Awesome. Uh, looks like we got somebody in here with a shout out for you. One second. Uh, we, most of us know, <laughs> know who this is. Hey, sorry, Major Clark. Uh, yeah, hello, I'm Re pre enlistment. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that, so, that, that guy, that guy is awesome. So, you know, I, I, I try to take a little bit from, from quite a few people and I look at him, I was like, man, that's, that's the standard right there. So, uh, thanks for the shout out, bro. I'll see you next week. <laughs> so we got one from, uh, we got a question from Randis bleed, uh, read his bland. Uh, I'm just combined his two names and just made up a new <laughs> name, right? Read his bland. Uh, currently service members can receive their OML through the army career tracker. Is there a plan to also add the board scores with remarks from the question. members and voted on each record. This may help identify what the service member needs to be more competitive among their peers. That's a great question. With, with Within within ACT, is that? Uh, yeah, so they, they wanna know within ACT, so they see their OML, is there gonna be any of the remarks in there from their board comments on there? Yeah, so so right now, um, not within ACT. However, there there's always the opportunity um, for the HRC branch managers to kind of have notes on, on, okay, this was uh, not board score. No, no, I, we're, we're not, we're not throwing board scores in there at all. It's about gotcha. OML and it's about uh, that, that can potentially make them, uh, you know, competitive for the assignments that they're being looked at for. So no on the board scores and it's not going to be within ACT. But I, I would say there's only been one iteration of the board for each, uh, well, outside of Sergeant Major, of the evaluation board for each uh, grade. So we're constantly uh, modifying it, updating it, make sure it makes sense. You know, people were used to the old AAR comments, or excuse me, not AAR comments, but the uh, proponency guidance after the board results were released. You yep. know, we, we, we just not mature enough to have that yet. So we, we will have that, you know, once we actually have a list so come next year, perfect example, the staff sergeant, I'll use staff sergeant evaluation. Well, I'll use master sergeant evaluation board because hopefully we'll start promoting off that. Come end of this year, when new board results are released, we can go back and look at how many were actually promoted on the previous year's OML. So then we could start our data based off of those results. Right now, we don't have any data based off the results because we don't have you know, we, we don't know who's going to get selected based off requirements. We don't know who's getting assignments. So that that is just the work in progress. It's, it's, it's maturing. And, and as this thing changes, we're going to make updates to make it, um, you know, more user friendly for soldiers to understand where they are and to make it easier for them to look and say, OK, this is what I need to be doing to stay competitive for promotion. If that makes sense. Yeah, you don't have the sample size right now. We got one iteration of OMLs. That's it. Like we don't right. have that sample right. size to be able to be put right. it out there. And, and a lot of people got to understand okay. that. A lot of I see a lot of comments uh, talking about. Uh, there was one comment specifically saying people that tell you not to worry about the board, uh, the, the new system. They already got theirs. Sorry, I'll tell you straight up. I was a staff. I was a sergeant promotable when I became a career counselor. I got promoted to staff sergeant. That was part of. I got promoted to staff sergeant. I missed getting looked at because at the time to get looked at for start the first first class, you had to have 36 months time in grade. I missed it by three months. So I was I didn't get my first look for SAR first class until I had over 48 months as a SAR first class. I mean staff SAR as it is, right? So it's it's not that we got it and we suddenly y'all to hold on. We've been through the process. The army it goes through ebbs and flows. Sometimes they promote fast, sometimes they promote slow, but it has a way of working itself out. So we got to give this chance, this new system a chance. And once we give it a chance, then we'll be able to say, hey, look, once we get a couple of iterations, Sergeant Major Gaskins and his team, they're going to be able to see, do some analysis, and they're going to make it better, and they're going to streamline it. So don't get disenchanted or disenfranchised. Everything is going to work yeah. out, I promise. No, you 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 answered that better than I could have answered, you know. So <laughs> I, I, no, seriously, that, that that is not even a joke right there. That's exactly what it is, you know. Um, and, and, and 
I understand that, you know, I'm sympathetic towards that. And then I'm not sympathetic towards that, you know, so <laughs> I, uh, I was on the master sergeant promotion list for 23 months. You know, some yep. of us old heads out there, if you're on the, if you're on the, uh, the net here, it was a year that they had two SAR first class or excuse me, master sergeant promotion boards. Um, however, that all fleshed out, I can remember having a sequence number for almost two years. Um, yep. You know, fast forward to Sergeant Major, you know, the whole select, train, educate, promote. I went to school in 14, graduated in 15, got frocked. Um, no, back it up. I was selected in 2013. So I'm hyped. Yes. 2013. <laughs> I start school in, a whole year later in 14. Okay. Graduate <laughs> in 15. Like, damn. I get frocked. Okay. I'm happy. It's going to happen. No, nah, didn't happen. A whole year later, 2016. So that whole process from me getting selected to hard strike pinning on Sergeant Major was about three years. So it, it happens. And just like you said, yeah. you know, it go it ebbs and flows. It really does. You know, so I would just ask that you, you know, those that are out there listening, you know, continue to stay motivated, continue doing to doing what you need to do to stay competitive. And it will all work out, you know. Um, and, and this is not me, you know, saying I don't care. You know, it's really not. It's, it's, no, it's about not at all. You know, you know what what can you do? You know what can we do uh, to 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 make the army better? You know individually. You know individually goes into collectively and collectively as a whole army. So so um, stay in the fight. You know continue to stay motivated, and I think you know things will work out. All right. Uh, so we got a question right here from Randy Austin. Uh, since you brought up the Star Major Academy, he wanted to know if there uh, is any more frocking out of the academy. Yep. So so not anymore. So class 71, they just graduated last Friday. Uh, congratulations to those. So they they were the last class uh, that have, that will frock uh, graduating from the, the Sergeant's Major Academy. Um, so, again, with the evaluation board process, there is no more frocking. You know, frocking is over. So why? You know, the question is why? Why are we doing that? So we, you know, it has been determined that we have more than enough um, based off of the requirements that we have right now out of each grade. You know, I'm specifically talking about E8 and E9, Master Sergeant and Sergeant Major. You know, so going to Master Sergeant, uh, those getting frocked to First Sergeant, uh, those Sergeants First Class, that, 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 that is, 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 you know, uh, you know, a hard one to swallow for some, you know, but we have more than enough master service in the army that aren't first service right now that could be first sergeants. Um, and that's what we're trying to encourage. You know, you are a master sergeant, you have the opportunity to be one and go out there and be one because there are plenty of them out there. And with the sergeants major, we're, we're, we're over. I think I was talking to my team last week. Um, as a whole, I think we're at about 101%. So we have more than enough sergeants major for the positions. Um, so, which is why we are no longer frocking. And that's right now. Again, if we determine that, hey, you know, that didn't quite make sense, we got to do something a little different, then then yes, we can we can start frocking again. But as of right now, no, there is no more frocking uh, coming out of the academy. And that's kind of the, the why behind that. I got you. Uh, we got a question that's been asked a couple of times, so I'm just going to ask it. Uh, uh, they say, can you turn down the academy as a match line with 18 years and six months and still be allowed to retire? Yes, you can. So that, that's, that's another thing that has changed recently. You know, usually it was uh, you had to decline, um, you know, prior to so you wouldn't get looked. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now it is prior to the board. You say you don't want to go to the, uh, the, the academy. Um, board results are released and you're on the list to go to the academy you have two weeks um i believe that's what we we established as the time to say nope i don't want to go and you're still you can still stick around um, and retire do your 20 years and retire so you won't be penalized uh, for turning down the academy and quite frankly we didn't do it this past board either so we had several several folks who turned it down after the results were released but now it's going to be official we, we, we're not going to penalize anyone so you know, again, not everybody wants to be a sergeant major. And then think about it. Some people at certain points in their career, 
you know, they get selected a little bit later. It's like, hey, man, you know, I don't want to invest this time in school knowing that I don't want to stay in and, and, and give that time. So we are saying, nope, if you get selected for the academy, you have a certain time frame to go and decline. So, um, Sergeant Jenkins, I hope to answer your question, bro. Yep. Oh, here's one. Uh, is there any plans uh, for the RCP for Staff Sergeant through Sar Sergeant Major? Um, I wouldn't say plans. I'll say talks. <laughs> you know, we're trying to, we, we, we are in talks with Army senior leaders to see what makes sense. Um, and, and why do I say that? So a good example is what we're doing with this year's Sergeant's Major Board. So this year we are allowing sergeants major who are eligible to compete for a brigade position, I hope y'all heard that, um, regardless of what their time and grade is uh, to compete. When in the past, you know, it was a cutoff. If they had X amount of time, I said time and grade, excuse me, time and service yes. uh, to compete, we are allowing them to do that regardless of their time and service. So if they are selected um, for a brigade CSM position, um, we will, uh, we will, mandate that they go to what's called the sergeant's major assessment program which i can get into for those who are interested in so that they have to attend the sergeant's major program assessment program get selected for that and then they are fully qualified to take a brigade csm assignment so why are we doing that we're starting at the brigade csm level to see if the best talent um, are the ones who are getting selected for the job so you notice i said sergeant major assessment program that's a whole new program um, um, you know, in light of the battalion commander's assessment program and the colonel's assessment program. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's assessment for life in essence, right? So, you know, you, you, you're excited, you made it, you got selected, but you got to go back and see if you are the right person for the right jobs, you know, because at the battalion brigade level, um, leadership levels, that's where the rubber meets the road. So we need to have those right individuals in those positions in order to lead those organizations. So, um, gotcha. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so Dan Gordon, I uh, just want to clarify your, your question or answer this for you. If you don't validate your board packet, will you be not qualified? Um, sorry, Major, correct me if I'm wrong. However, uh, you don't have to validate anymore to be evaluated. Um, you're going to be looked at regardless. So yeah, it, the best thing you can do is be ready. Board. It's evaluation board. You're going to be looked at regardless. So I'm not, I'm not encouraging you not to validate your packet. Um, that's essentially saying you looked at it and you agree with it. So, you know, first of all, I'd encourage that, that individual or, or anybody to do that, validate it. However, you still didn't get looked at. It's still <laughs> happening. So. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, nah, it's, awesome. it makes sense. It makes sense. Everybody's going to get looked at. You gotta, uh, you can't, you can't tell with the whole, if you just, uh, hey, I don't want to get looked at. Like you can't opt out. It's not like the, the blended retirement yeah. plan. It's, it's, it's not, you know, it is, it is evaluating every single non-commissioned officer in the army. Gotcha. All right. So, All right, so go ahead, one Tom, more Rick. question before Tim hit it hard. Uh, Johnny wants to know if we have to get reboarded, how much of an impact will earning the expert soldier badge have? If you have to get reboarded, I don't, I don't understand that mm -hmm. part. What, he means reevaluated. I think he means he got on mail mm -hmm. and then he's got to go into the net. He didn't get promoted. So now he's yeah. got to go and get reevaluated. Yeah. Yes. I, he, he ain't, ain't going to get me caught up telling him if he got an ESB. <laughs> <laughs> That's an automatic hey, go. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey I, I'll, give, I'll give the Army answer. The uh, expert soldier badge is an, an, an awesome accomplishment. You know, hey, that means you mastered your warrior tasks and battle drills as the non-commissioned officer that's what we want so we want them to get after that so they can uh, teach it to their their soldiers under their charge um so that is the the professional sergeant major answer right there but that's not going to guarantee that you're going to get a low oil mail because you have an esb so but no that that but I, I make light of it but but seriously having an esb especially as an nco i think that's that will be looked at um very highly very highly you know because you know, think about it as we, we kind of go on in our careers, you know, some of us kind of kind of get a little lax sometimes. So, you know, doing those things for one, you're you're putting up a good example for the soldiers under your charge, you know, because you don't have to do that. But if you go out there and get that, that makes it that much better, you know. So, yeah, I highly encourage it. 
Uh, we had a comment that I want to address uh, before we before we start wrapping it up. We had a comment from Sander Viz. It said, we have retention NCOs acting like this on Facebook Live with a Sergeant Major. Shaking my head. All right, a couple things, right? One, I'm not a retention NCO. I have a badge. I don't have it on right now, right? But it's, it's got a little badge. I'm with the school. I earn an MOS. I'm a career counselor. So it's Sergeant uh, Shantae. She's a career counselor. Also, we're, we're making this as as relaxed and as uh, easy as question as possible so I'm ready to get the information out. A lot of times if we're out here just being like death by PowerPoint, you're not going to watch. You're not going to ask your questions. You're not going to you're not going to receive the information. So we have a relationship with Sergeant Major Gaskins that we can joke. And Sergeant Major Gaskins is more down to earth than a lot of people realize. And he's here for that. So I just want you to understand that. One, not we're not retention NCOs. We're career counselors. Um, retention NCOs are, are unit level. Um, us, we're at a battalion or higher. And Sergeant Major is here to give the information to everybody as a whole. So we are here to make it as easy as possible. Like, you know how when you're in school, they say break it down Barney style in the Army. I'm one of those people that, that got to get it broken down Barney style. So the, that we try to get the information out to y'all as best as possible. Barney style. Yeah, All right. Really, um, really, you know, and we, we talked about this. So this was totally 100 percent exactly how we wanted the conversation to go. You know, so, um, you know, there's a time and a place for the professional back and forth. Um, and, and they understand that. And I understand that, too. But but for this forum, we wanted to make it as as, as lax and and, you know, you know, approachable, um, easy to watch as possible. That was the intent. But I uh, and, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and somebody said, don't take it so serious, bro. I'm not taking it serious because obviously I, I quote Jeezy on here on the regular. Right. My, my hustle is nonstop. I'm not going to stop. So we're not as, as I'm taking it. I'm not taking it serious. I just wanted to address a couple of things. Cause a lot of people don't understand that. Um, so I'm just asking is you always have an open invitation to see us. And anytime we got information, we always come out to y'all between y'all and the army, uh, between y'all, you and the army uniform team. I mean, I pretty much feel like I'm a part of, uh, the, uh, G1. Hey, hey, shout, shout out, shout out to Sergeant Major Brian Sanders taking over as headquarters battalion Fort me, uh, Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major, June, July 9th. Uh, yes, so, and yeah. shout out Sergeant Major Sanders. Sergeant Major he Sanders. Me, yeah, he got me on the uh, he got me on the uh, Beard small group, so I'm ready. Um, I had grown <laughs> it out like I was just down in North Carolina in the country the last couple of weeks, so uh, uh I had it real big. <laughs> I gotta work on it though because like the sun hit it and it turned red, and I don't, I don't have hey, red hair. No pat, no patch zone, bro. You can't have the patches. I mean, oh no, no, it was thick, it was thick. No, I, no patches. I my, I gotta connect, it connects. Right. Um, but no, we appreciate all of y'all. Uh, Sergeant Major Gaskins, uh, is there anybody that you want to shout out other than Sergeant Major Sanders that you want to shout out uh, before we wrap this up? Uh, I mentioned it a little earlier. Shout out to uh, Class 71 of uh, the Sergeant Major Academy. Uh, awesome accomplishment. They're going to go out and do great things for the Army, um, specifically the 42 Alphas within there. They were eight strong. Um, you know, if any of you guys are watching, I just want to say congratulations to you all. And you're going to go out and do big things. Um, Shout out to my shirt, man. That's that's what I want. Yeah. Shout, out. <laughs> shout out to that, bro. <laughs> that was one hundred percent on purpose, you know. So, uh, yeah, be you. They'll adjust. I mean, I, I I make light of it, but I've been this way my whole army career, and it has worked for me. So, I would just encourage anyone to be themselves. You know, if yourself is a is is a little rough around the edges, okay, that's a little different. You might want to change your approach, but be you. Um, and, and, and never change and, and, and things will work out as they should. And I appreciate that Jeezy quote. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a Jeezy fan myself. I don't know if you know that, but as a matter of fact, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, and, we know. Uh, and staff's on Waterbury, shout out to you. We got, we got 730, 1930 Peloton appointment. Hey, for those that are, are Peloton <laughs> users, KG <laughs> underscore EST 77, come see me, pull up, come see me. <laughs> How, that's how you. That's how you tell me. Tell me you're rich without telling me you're rich. You do Peloton. <laughs> well, that is a great, great investment. Great investment. <laughs> shout say who you shout out this week. All right. So before I do my shout outs for anyone who was a little bit late to join our show, uh, we did have Sergeant Major uh, Gaskins from the Army D1 from the DMPM. Um, if you did not see um, your question answered or um, anything like that, you can always come back and rewatch this on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and we will be going through the comments later and answering some of these as well. Um, as far as my shout outs, I'd like to shout out uh, 
Bingham and Curran. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I won't take a shine, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and shout out my Peloton crew too because we've been getting it. I mean, don't let Sergeant Major Gaskins fool y'all. Like he's a beast on the bike. I'm already over here trying to hydrate and get ready for the ride. Um, and if you guys want to join, I mean, we got we can start up a whole army network for Peloton. Hit me up, Shantae Waterbury, Army it. Reenlistment. Let's so that's all I got. Uh, shout out to my connect at the um uh, at the Class Six for the Peach Crown. I don't really like peach crown like that, but nobody else can get it. So I'll drink it. Um, and shout out to my guys. Uh, big shout out. Sarn Bingham, Kevin Bingham hit 300 reenlistments this week. That's crazy. Like in the FY, that's amazing. Like he's that's killing huge. it. Uh, Curran's over 200. And uh, shout out to everybody that's doing it and staying in the army and everybody that's uh, tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Um, send us those pictures. Send, okay. Send her pictures. Send her pictures. All right. Um, we'll be back next week with another show. I appreciate y'all. And uh, thank y'all again. Have a good night. Good right. night.